Englisch. Ja, kan ik start? Ja. So, the most important uh, massage technique, of course, is this one. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we talk about uh, the after massage, uh, this is of course uh, after the real massage has uh, started. This is what I already mentioned before. This is uh, the techniques that people normally uh, consider to be massage. We have to understand that uh, massage is uh, about uh, opening up the body. This is why in Chinese medicine is called the train of pulling and pushing. Yes? And then the techniques that we showed in the, in the earlier day, this is pulling and pushing, basically. So whatever is left now is still pulling and pushing, but it is working out whatever you have uh, laid the groundwork for. And that means that the groundwork is done and doing the base work for you. So common techniques, and she has this uh, hoodie, no, it's unfortunate. Um, I can take this off. No, it's okay, no? just leave it. Okay. It's not a real hindrance, hindrance, it's more like an uncomfortable thing. Great. Uh, simple techniques like letting the shoulders, these are regular things. Because, for instance, somebody lies like this, or because somebody is like lying uh, in the other way, letting the shoulders actually doesn't really make any much sense. It only makes sense when somebody sits straight up. Yes? So at the moment when you do this, the only thing that you do, you increase a little bit of the blood flow, but you can see, for instance, with here, here with her, that there is tension here in the neck, and because of letting this, tension doesn't become any less. Because you can't do anything about the tension, because the tension is caused by the force. And then you would use acupuncture. Now, of course, as a result, if you would be a diagnostician, you would say, oh, you have 10 shoulders. Yes? So when somebody makes a diagnosis for somebody who's being massaged, you have 10 shoulders. This is because of the position of the body, not because the person has 10 shoulders. Mm -hmm. They might have 10 shoulders, but they might also not. 10 shoulders usually proves itself by headaches. Yes? So if there's no headaches, no 10 shoulders. Then shoulders might be active, but it doesn't necessarily mean pain. Uh, they might be hard, but they might have just been bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, or doing something similar. So that's very important. So at the moment when you squeeze, you don't have to squeeze very hard. The only thing that you basically do is you also you pull and you push, and you make sure that blood flow goes through this, and you use your thumb along the uh, uh, shoulder blades to press the muscle up. The muscle, of course, is about this shape. Yeah, so you basically activate this muscle uh, in that sense, you're bringing it up and then you shake it again. Yeah? So you hold the muscle and shake you it. You hold the muscle and you shake it. So this is basically what you do. Mm -hmm. Almost all massage techniques are just like that. She happens to have very small shoulders. If somebody's very big, you can also pat like this and stuff like this. Yeah? This is all these kind of things that people do, uh, which you can use or you, you don't use. It doesn't really mm -hmm. matter that much. Um, then what is very important though, you lift up the skin bit by bit and you go up and down the spine so that the skin becomes loose. Could you do this? Okay. Feels comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Most of the time it doesn't feel very comfortable for the simple reason that you actually pull on the underlying uh, structures of the skin which hold the skin to the body. The skin should be a little bit loose, not too loose. Okay. It should not be tight. And what <laughs> is the purpose of the taking the skin? <coughs> when you shake the skin and you lift up the skin, you increase the, the water metabolism under the skin, okay. and you increase the blood flow also under the skin. So that's actually what supports uh, relaxation. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about relaxation of the tissues underneath. Yes. Uh -huh. And this is where all the collateral so Chinese medicine are being considered to be. Okay. So sideways. Well, these are not necessarily the most comfortable techniques. It depends very much on a person if this is really comfortable or not. I just show this technique. Normally you would do this in a little bit late stage of the massage. Yeah, so you will not start with that. Normally after you have done these kind of techniques, you finish these techniques, the best thing would be to just caress the nerval tension, the nerve tension, from the spinal column going outward. So you disperse the tension. That's basically most important part of the massage after, yes, because this is actually doing the real work. So I then doing immediately both sides also. Then the you side. also immediately go to both sides. Yeah. You can switch to the other side and you go this direction. Do like this makes no sense. Yeah? Makes no sense. Also, yeah. so you have to use this 
coming all the way from the spinal column, from the side of the column, you go out, go out, go out, go out. And it has to flow with each other. You cannot do like this, and like this, and uh -huh. like this, and like this. So it doesn't really make sense. Petting, of course, is also very useful. So after you have done one side, you change already before you do other things, or you start first one side relaxing and then... No, usually you would every time alternate. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Um, <coughs> then moving the muscles around. She doesn't have much muscles, so there's nothing very much to move around. <laughs> yes. But what you do, basically, is you move to the left, you move to the right. So you basically twist the muscles, you twist the muscles, you twist the muscles, you twist the muscles. This is for the simple reason that muscle tissue is intertwined like this. So mm -hmm. muscle tissue is uh, like a, like a hinge a little bit like that. And the muscle works in this way. Every cell works like that way to mm -hmm. each other. They still work like that. And at the moment when you twist like that, you basically do this. Yes? Mm -hmm. So at the moment when you twist like this, then your the stickiness between them becomes a little bit less. So that they are more free to move, mm -hmm. right? Uh, <coughs> normally the muscles they build up uh, collagen to to connect to keep themselves connected but when people have a very passive lifestyle this collagen becomes harder and harder and it builds a little bit like a like a harness and this harness uh, avoids free movement yes, this is the reason why people become stiff at a certain point and this is uh, the normal glue it is because the body tries to protect itself in any way possible the best way to protect yourself is just by moving it, by being movable. But at the moment when you're not very well, uh, uh, how do you say, when you're not, uh, uh, when you're not moving a lot, the only thing that you have is trying to uh, deal with impact. So that means you have to become as hard as possible, a lot like a caterpillar pot. Hmm. Yes. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a technique like this, but also techniques like this, see, so it's also twisting, 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 twisting. Yes, very simple techniques. Do you hold with your fingers a little bit? No, you hold with your palm. Okay. Yeah, your fingers actually are not being used in massage, okay. almost nothing. Yeah. yeah. Only with this, when you're combing, uh -huh. you're combing, yes. And with a technique like this, uh, you twist around, yes. And also with technique like this, you twist around. That means that you push against the muscles. Uh, so if you go fast or slow depends on the person, like in her case, because she has very little muscles, to get a grip you have to slow down. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to slow down. If somebody's very big, you have a very easy grip so you can go faster. Yes? And the fastness may is there a reason? No, there's no reason for fastness. You okay. might be in a hurry. Okay. Mm. Yes. Okay, then <coughs> normally <laughs> this is the pressure point part. Uh, the pressure points that uh, require to be massaged is usually along the spinal column uh, and might be, might be on the uh, round part of the, of the back muscles. But normally you would start with massaging a little bit in the shoulder muscles. Yes. This the part is like done with your before. fingers. Yeah, same like what we did before. And now do it a little bit hard, just to make clear so what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So then at the moment when you go like that, just you can prepare further. Yeah, you can do the same techniques that we did before, the squeezing, the moving of the skin, that will be a good option to lift or to squeeze the skin. Yes. In the same way you can also do like this. Yeah, which is more for the spinal cord. But at the moment when you continue with the pressure points, there's two ways. First of all, rotate your thumbs on the points. You see, this takes a lot of time. Because basically on every vertebra, you can actually make a rotation. This does not necessarily follow the acupuncture points, right? This is of the spinal column. Yes. With the lower back, you have to be a little bit careful because you're also pre pressing into the kidneys. If somebody is a little bit sensitive, they will have pain. Yes. Until you come all the way to the sacral bone and you end up pushing a little bit uh, to the hip uh, bone. Yes. Have your grip on the floor of the Understand? Understand? Yes. Then you continue, and this is similar like what they do in Shiatsu. Uh, this is where Shiatsu actually is based on. 
and just keep the point pressed a little bit. And you see this also takes time. And that's just next to the next vertebra. To the vertebra. It's in the collateral of the two minor. And is it between the uh, the ribs? It is on average between the ribs. Yes, okay. it's not on the ribs. No. Okay. Now you have to understand that where you're pushing here is mostly on the uh, cartilage. Yes. So you're pressing the, the cartilage. cartilage is the connective tissue mm -hmm. between the ribs and the spinal column. Okay. Yeah, the ribs are not connected to heart tissue with the uh, spinal column. Yeah, your ribs are basically floating in your body. This is why movement is very important and why the muscles are supposed to carry the bones instead of the other way around. In the same way, you could, if you're floating a lot, you could move along the collateral. Do you like that? <coughs> then with your hands, it's very easy to disperse further. You feel the extension. How do you feel that, uh, Elena? How does it feel? Yeah, <coughs> so, and again, combing. And again, booming. <coughs> so, there's somebody at the door. Do you have a mic? So, at home, when you're combing, Mm. You go outward like that. <laughs> see how simple? Yeah. But you see how that feels? And then how does it feel? Mm -hmm. So again, you're spreading, you're again, you're dispersing, you're dispersing tensions, yes? If somebody happens to be very weak, but it's a more medical application, then their techniques, of course, will, dis will, will change. This is why you don't talk about that. That's the sign for you. Yes, I know. Then after you're finished, you stretch out further, you stretch out further, you stretch out further to make sure that the body definitely is in right shape. And then you can again shake a little bit. Hey. To see if everything's going to be fine. Zijn we even begonnen? Volgens mij om 9 uur. Oh, ja. We zijn altijd om 9 uur begonnen, zoals het afgesproken. <laughs> so, <coughs> uh, we stretch like that. Yes? So then you see if you have actually had any success with that. Then at the moment when you go further, and you've already done some general shaking of the legs, you just repeat the general shaking of the legs, right? general shaking of the legs is very important and you go in both directions it's the outer side and the inner outer side, side, and inner side. so first i shake outward yes mm -hmm. then i shake inward you see because the muscles have to be moved the same way you go like this and you can squeeze like this so this is the gripping technique that you've already learned earlier uh, with your hand techniques uh -huh. yes. and you just take the muscle up or this yeah yeah Yes. Yeah. Uh, take and lifting is very important because it increases blood circulation and without this blood circulation the legs will not relax. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do to a leg, it doesn't really relax. And the only thing that you can do, like for instance uh, in an erotic massage, you can go like... <laughs> <laughs> and then you soothe somebody and they fall asleep. Yeah. Yes? That is not the purpose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then after you have done these kind of things... because this increases the blood flow in the deeper layers of the tissue. Yeah? Okay. Very important. <coughs> At all, when you pound somebody, don't pound too hard. Yes, don't pound too hard. The moment when you pound on the inside of the leg, pound like this. Again, it's a little bit like how you deal with a beef stick. Mm -hmm. yeah? There's no real difference with between them. So <laughs> 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 this is basically what it is. And because a beef steak, you know, is delicious. And a relaxed leg also is delicious in the same way. Mm. Yes. So that's about it. And then at the moment when you're ready, like that, yeah, you shake a little bit more. How's it going? And then you shake it off. You shake it off. You shake it off all the way from the top, all the way from the top, because this is the most important part. Yes. 
Then at the moment here I've done both legs. You start at the top of the bottom and you go down. Don't start here because this creates stagnation. Mm -hmm. Yes? And this area, the leg, the middle part of the area, very easily has stagnation. Look, this is usually very hard with people. And sometimes you even when you press there, you get like a reflex like, hey! Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid that. Then at the moment you have done that, and the same way you can start in the bottom, but here you start more soft, uh, all the way like that. And you can go all the way from the head, go like that. Yes? If you have space. If you're on the table, it's easier, but you have to make sure that you practice your paces. If you practice your paces properly, you can go from the top to the bottom without them noticing. Yes, that's also why it's, it's called fluid boxing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Just to help you develop the right kind of uh, pace. <coughs> then at the moment, when you are there, hold on to the feet, lift the leg, shake. Yeah. Same, keep the leg lifted from the palm, yeah. shake like this, shake like this. The vibrates basically the muscles. Then at the moment when you come from there, lift, pull, yes, put your arm in between, see I've never let go of the leg, I always keep in touch with the leg, I press my arm against the hollow of the knee and I rotate around and I left it, lift again, okay, yes, then from here move to the left, to the right, see this is not only for the knee joint, Actually, hip. also for the hip joint. Yeah. A lot of people they have tensions there. Then keep your Achilles uh, tendon long. Yes, at the moment when you keep your Achilles tendon long, uh, people have opportunity to relax in the collars. At the moment when you relax, put the leg on your leg in this case, yes, press on the calf, go down. Don't press too deep because people sometimes have very painful tensions in there. Then Along the calf, trousers backwards. Along the calf, there are several lines that you want to follow. Here on the outside of the leg, and on the inside of the leg, on the back side of the bone, you just follow here along the femur. And then you go inward, and you can follow this from both sides. Just like this. That's easy. Yes? In the same way, at the moment when you go like this, you hold the foot like this, you Press on the front side on the bone. Yes. Press on the front side on the bone. For the people who have done the wet feet massage, yes, also in the same way, it's the same technique that you use it there. Yes. How does it feel? Yeah, it's painful. Yes. Mm -hmm. As for most people, it's a little bit painful because the liver channel is here, the stomach channel, and the gallbladder channel is here, and for most people, they have a lot of tension. Then hold on the toes and rotate. Yes. Hold on the heel and rotate. You Same hold on toe, you pull them a little bit outward? No, you don't pull them. Okay. You make sure that they rotate around. And you can pull them if you want to, but you don't have to. You can also push them. Yes? Okay. So you can do this both, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, same when you're here like this. And what you want to do is you want to, of course, achieve movement in the toes. Yes? Yeah. So you pull each toe individually, like this. And in the same way when you have done both legs, Pull both toes on both sides. Yes. You can do it like this. Yes. Then at the moment when you have done that, shake. See the same shaking that we started with comes back again. Mm -hmm. And allow. Shake. Then go in. Shake. Same. Yes. Then. channels. Also outward, you rub the channels. At the moment when you've done that, you rub these channels for instance, you can slap a little bit more. Yeah, so you have a lot of opportunity to punish your clients. <laughs> yes? Alright? Then, while you are busy with the feet, yes? so this is like a general outline before, when you're busy with the feet, of course you can do a lot more things. You can uh, hit on the heel which is also 
what you learn when you learn Patch Chen, you learn to step on the heel, not from the middle of the foot, but on the heel. To make sure that you stretch out your toes properly when you're standing. And this point here connects all the way to the ear area. Yes? And on both sides, here on the feet, you have the extra channels uh, running up to the legs and stuff like this. And they have to help you carry your body. So these things are very important. What so could you say? This area is very important. Huh? What could you say if you're tapping on the heel and they say like it hurts my knee? Yeah. Can you say like try to relax and for the rest? I don't know. No, you just say yes. That's that's possible. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Try not to give any advices. No. Okay. Doing your massage. Yeah. At the moment when you give an advice, you become a therapist. Okay. Yes. You try not to become a therapist. You try to be a masseur. Yeah. Uh, a therapist has its own specialization and says, oh yeah, that is because of this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you say. Uh, you can best do this and this and this. You imply as if you know why they have pain in their knees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that means you you uh, you pose as a therapist. Okay. Try to avoid that. Yes. Uh, <coughs> you could, of course, always slap on the bottom of the <coughs> feet for general circulation. Press at the young chain point. Yes, and squeeze in, in general. Just because people like that. What I normally do is very simple. Also, rub a little bit like this. On the floor. Yes. I sometimes use the arm for that. Yes. You have to understand that the individual techniques they are meaningless. Yes. So in themselves they have no particular effect. So if you do them sloppy or if you do them neat or if you do them precise, it doesn't really matter. Your general attitude towards the client is what makes the massage becomes good and beautiful and effective. Yes. So your attention should be uh, very clear. Your movement should become organic and natural. Organic and natural, that's the right, the right word. And then it doesn't mean uh, that it doesn't matter if you act playful or if you act serious or if you are uh, acting uh, rude or anything like that. As long as your movements, they are done with attention. Yes? Mm. Because the attention strings all the different things together and makes it a massage. And that's what's most important. Any questions? At the end, you rub again? Or you just leave well, the feet and then it's... At moment you let them lie down for a moment. Uh, of course, what is very helpful is to stretch out a little bit again. Uh, so that the rib cage uh, has the opportunity to relax the diaphragm. So as a last part, you can just stretch them out a little bit again. And put the arms back or put the arms on the other side. Then. Okay. And the arms you don't uh, massage or yeah, Another squeeze this or this yes. thing. But at the moment when the client returns, Turns around, I'm sorry, turns around. Mm -hmm. Yes, so now can you please turn around? Yes. Uh. <laughs> you again, of course, start with stretching. Same. Mm -hmm. Start with stretching. Yes. So you're stretching your upward. Start with stretching your upward. Hold on for a moment. Pull the fingers. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. see now the game. start moving. Yes? If they're big or small, it's very easy to move them around, but it doesn't give a sense of safety. Although, as a play, that can be very helpful. Like when I do massages to uh, you or show my students, I sometimes do these kind of things just because I like you to stay relaxed under all conditions. Uh, it's just the same like what I do to my cat. That's just to help you overcome fear, but for regular clients, I do not always advise them. Is very important. Yeah, yes. but now it cracks. The other. Now it cracks. Yes. Yeah. See, so the reason why I show you on both sides is because you want to test how relaxed somebody is, and people are usually more relaxed when they're on their back. So yeah. the massage does not require the client to become relaxed because of the massage, because the client will relax because they're on the backs. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a natural thing. No massage can change that. Mm -hmm. yes. If they can't relax on their back, your massage will not contribute to that. Yes, so that's a very important part. Then, same like you did on the back side, you shake the feet, pull on the other side, the same. All the same tapping you can do on the legs as well. Yes? So that's a very important part. The same from this side. But where, where do you start with the, with the front massage? Just with legs? With the feet. With the feet? Yes. And then you go to so legs. you can pull up forward also. 
and then you can do the same thing, the squeezing of the muscles that we did before, shaking, yes, the same, exactly the same, yes. Then, at that moment, you lift the knees, you will go forward, make sure that you press, then you put one hand on the shoulder, yes, and you cross over. Not only cross over like that, you put one hand on the hip, and cross over to the side. Not for everybody equally easy, because a lot of people they have a lot of tension there. So don't press too hard. Then at that moment, put the leg straight. Press against the knee and the heel at the same time. This is a good one for you because it's uh, basically it's bodybuilding mm -hmm. for most people. And at that moment, you try to pull it forward like this. See how far they can go. So they stretch their buttock more deeply. Yes? Understand? Maybe that we ask about pressing the, the leg outward. Yeah. Uh, if somebody, because it's, it's, it's massage with uh, client is in core, yep. but if they don't have flexible core, that how then, much uh, sense does it make at all to do that? Then you just uh, tell them next time to put on something more flexible. But do you do that at all or you just skip you just, that? You just try it, yes. And, and you show them that the tense, tense charges prevents them from actually doing good massage. Yes. Uh, in worst case, you ask them to take off the trousers. Yes. So then, at that moment, when you go further like that, hold on on the bottom part and hold on to the heel and move around. Yes. So that there is a double way of moving, going around and going around, and you form the widest circle possible. Yes. Doesn't matter if you go fast or if you go slow. Yes. Same forward, pull. Pull. It hurts, very relaxed, very easy. Yes. But for most people, it will mean please relax, please relax, please relax, please relax. Because they're very tension. And so you ask them to relax. You don't force them to relax. Yes? And then hold when they come. And they usually they're afraid. They're afraid that you just go drop them on the floor, which you're not. You're just going to make them a little bit long and then put it down again. Mm -hmm. yes? Then <coughs> the arms. <laughs> That's okay. I was laughing about your face because you're looking completely dressed up. Yes? You're looking now like somebody in northern China. At the moment when you do this uh, massage, you basically you lift up the arm and you keep it lifted up all the time. And you support on the bottom side with your shoulders and you move the shoulder around like this. Yes? You move around like this. Normally you would start by just shaking. The shaking helps the blood flow to go through the arm. Yes? Of course, when you keep it up, blood flow will go away from here. So it means you also have to pull here to make the blood flow come back. See? Basically. So whatever direction you go to, yeah, you can make all kinds of rotations with the arm. This is what it does. Then at that moment, rotate around the wrist. You can even rotate around the wrist by holding your fingers in between. Feel like that. Okay. Stretch, stretch. Then at that moment, hold on to the thumb, lift up at the elbow, rotate the elbow. This is the same like in any other kind of techniques that we do here for the arms, because the arms are just very simple appendages. Yes? There's nothing very complicated about them. Yes? Then stretch out, sideways, yes? so that you almost pull them over. Then from there, this stretch, rotate sideways, and go over different techniques that we already have studied before. Both directions. Yes. You can help by tapping to relax them deeper. And it's just to give attention to them in different places. You don't need to squeeze or whatever kind of thing. And if somebody is very, very big and they have really, very big muscles, then you might want to apply the same techniques like you would to the leg. I want to ask. Yes? That's it. Does it feel? Yeah. All right. So I would like you to practice these techniques this morning. I will check on in, in on you uh, several. 